We asked people to send us their best code for review. And in this video, this is going to be a small series. I'm going to be reviewing your plugin code. This is something that I wanted to do for a long time. So I'm feeling excited without any further ado, I'm going to be cracking right into it. And here are some of the principles we're going to be evaluating when looking at your code. So great code, first of all, follows standard conventions. The names should look certain way, right? If you have a method, it's not on player join, for God's sake, it's just on player join, right? This is also not C sharp. So the first letter should be small, things like that. You can just Google what Java conversions are. Second of all, it should be simple and immediately understandable, right? Imagine that you should give it to your friend who is a programmer, but has never seen your code. Is he going to look at it and, and does it read like a newspaper? Is he going to understand it without spending, you know, two, three months on studying it? That there is an extremely important principle. You basically want to make your code so simple that even if you get, you know, even if you pass out, you wake up from coma 10 years ago, or 10 years from now, you come you can come back and you can still understand your code. Because what I see people do is they, they come up with any of they come up with these special systems. And then two months later, they forget uh, what they, they mean, and they have to do these expensive nasty rewrites. Next, avoid repetitiveness. So I'm going to be specifically looking today for repetitiveness in the code. And that means that you should use, you know, methods, you should use more abstraction instead of just duplicating if blocks because it just works, right? Also avoid unnecessary use of static when it's not supposed to be using, I'm going to be looking at all that. Also consistent names. So um, this ties into standard conventions, but I mean consistent names. If you use, for example, player player, then next time you want to call player player in another method. You don't want to do player P and then player player. You just want to pick one. I do recommend you go with player player uh, because this one is the uh, most uh, easy to understand and you just use the same uh, variable names consistently. Also uses proper encapsulations and uses the least minimum access. So whenever possible, use private. Do not just put public everywhere and think about these access modifiers. Next, uh, one method ideally, ideally does one thing. I know it's not always possible, but please, if you do something like this, set player name, right? If you do something like that, uh, please do not teleport your player to spawn. This is just so confusing. And I see this sometimes this is a ridiculous example, but people try to hide uh, multiple things uh, in their methods and always try to make sure that, you know, a method, first of all, should have should have less maximum three. I know, again, there is going to be exceptions. But if you end up with like, this right like super long it's just going to be a confusing mess and also make sure that the name is very simple descriptive clear and ideally this is one uh, thing so without any further ado let me open up github and let me crack right into it so this one is virtual winter library parent and immediately i can see that this library is multi-platform it works for bucket and it works for bungie it has a shared uh, core which is great let me open up the pon this one looks incredibly simple. I do like it because it's very clean. It's as short as possible and I can immediately understand it. Uh, and we're going to be dealing with some errors today. looks like it. So library parent, let me have a look at the shared. It has command, uh, concurrency, config, framework, framework, and storage. All right, great. Let me have a look at a command class, abstract module an abstract and a register and command service wrap sender. I assume that they need to have a sender like this because this can either be a bungee cord or this can either be a player a proxy player from bungee and or a bucket player instance. So, okay, you know, th this can work. However, you're going to be careful with that. You're going to make it more explicit because things can get wrong here uh, if this is used improperly. But I assume that uh, you instruct uh, people to use it properly and then it's going to be fine. Overall, the class is clean. Great. This one abstract module, get register, uh, register defaults. Yeah, nothing, nothing bad that I see here. And then you get, you get this right and you bind it to an instance. Okay. Okay, great. Um, it's a quite a lot of abstraction. Like I would go with like more specific names, but I assume that uh, this, this looks very high level. This looks quite professional. So I do like it. I assume that you have a lot of experience in this. And then this one we already reviewed. Let me open up register. 
and there's just one method. So yeah, overall, I'm not finding anything nasty or anything bad right here. I think it's pretty cool. How about a config library? So this one, okay, this one is just an interface. Reload async callback. I like that. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then what is the callback? Concurrent is right here. Callback, void call. Yeah, so I don't think you, you really need that. I would just um, use runnable, for example. Great. Let me go back right here. Let me open up bucket and let me do a quick review again. Not sure why this is crashing. And let me just look at the implementation bucket YAML config, right? Okay. I like that. These, uh, these fields look consistent, right? Names are consistent and they're very clear. So everybody understands uh, what they're doing. Uh, here's a constructor project. What is a project? It looks like this has to do something with the main plugin class. Probably. I don't know. Here's a path and here's an executor service. Okay. All right. That, um, that can work because you're also, I assume this has to do something with the, with the saving uh, async method. And then you save the resource and then yeah, nice little try and catch right here. Uh, here's you try to convert unchecked to uh, checked exception. I mean, okay. Um, typically, if you want to be like very high level, you would need to maybe log this exception to a file inside your plugin. This is something that I do so that, you know, my customers have a comprehensive log of all the issues, right? Uh, maybe print out more information. Could not load config um, path, but I'd also put in maybe the file right here, or actually no, because it can crash somewhere here. No, it typically would crash here. So no, it doesn't look bad. It's just very basic, but it's fine. When it comes to coding standards, it looks fine. Now here, what is this? The file is actually final, but then as executor service is not de de declared final. So this is a bit of an inconsistency. Oh, now that I can see that I can see this final being used here, but not being used here. So you should keep it consistent and you should just type in final oops all uh, everywhere and you can have IntelliJ do that automatically for you you can you can have a safe actions plugin installed from the marketplace and configured to do this just make sure to keep it consistent all right and this one is very basic as well getter you can use lumbook for that this will get rid of this completely and um i'm not sure if you want people to extend this class if not then i just make it final uh, reload async. Yeah. Okay. This one looks basic as well. I mean, overall it's, it's clean. I like it because like notice how, how, how short these methods are, right? And they're very clear and they're not confusing at all. And like one method does one thing and does one thing only. So overall, I, I do like it very much. This is uh, an, a really good example. The person probably has a lot of experience and actually let me have a look at the, the front page, the module. So I assume that this one is a module that, that you know, a plugin developer uh, can use to hook its own commands into this library and hook its own menus into this library. I would be careful making a factory and like going super, super abstract. But my assumption is you want the menus to work on both Bungie and, and, and Bucket. And that's why factories needed to be like a bridge, like a middle, middleman. So understandably. Commands. Okay, look great. You you go with the um, annotations route. That's great. There's multiple ways people work this around. Uh, annotations work just fine. This one is a bit confusing, like the sender and then the argument. Um, maybe I would get rid of the sender and just just type in player as sender right here, and then keep other, and then maybe get rid of the argument. But I assume you might need it because you're using the player somewhere. But you, I don't think you need the sender here. Uh, just to keep it as, as short as possible. Great. Next one is an example of menu being used. Yeah, I do like that. It sounds very um, thought through how this is used. It's a great example. And I assume that there is more customization options available in this, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, one thing I really, really hate when I see this, I cringe like three different, um, three different generic types right here. Like, yeah, I assume that there is a specific reason, right? Like menu action too. However, it's just going to get out of hand over time, right? I would generally just go with one maximum two, and then maybe I would uh, make a custom class. So maybe instead of the table, I would just completely rework um, this. And I, instead of this, 
I would just create like button table class without taking integer item stack, just button table. And then I would put in here 13 and then the nether star, right? And then the click type. Yeah, so essentially this could, could, this could stay, but this one, I would just create a custom um, table button class for it something. So that way you avoid uh, yeah, these three generic types. But yeah, I assume that the table is universal and then these three can be mixed and, and changed um, in any other places of the plugin. Great. I mean, overall, it's a pretty solid example. It's pretty consistent. I haven't found any beginner mistakes much at all. So I'm going to give you a really, really good rating. I think that you are an experienced developer based on what I can see here. So yeah, good job. Really good job. I'm going to leave a link for this library for others to inspire themselves because I think that you know, you know, people will find a lot of inspiration for it. So thank you so much for submitting. I hope that you've enjoyed this analysis. I hope that people learned something from it. I'm going to leave these notes as well. And if you want to learn more about making Minecraft plugins, we actually have a course called Project Orient, which will give you all of these coding conventions. It contains full Java course specifically designed for Minecraft. It contains a full Minecraft course specifically designed for understanding how to write plugins, understanding how to make them really nice and clean. We have a full mini game week in there. We have a full custom menus, uh, custom configs, custom monster sections in there. And uh, best of all, we also teach you how to sell and how to market your plugins and how to get more players on your server. And I am on there myself twice per week. We're doing something called live coaching on Zoom. That means if you get stuck at any point in these course lessons, which happen to be, which are videos, you can jump on a call with me, actually unmute yourself and speak one-on-one, -on -one, or you can just send me questions live and I answer them live, or you can I'll send me your code for review uh, and I'll review it live on twice per week Zoom coaching calls. That way you actually get uh, the best level of help possible. And we make sure that you learn this really, really quickly and that you actually understand what you learn. So if you want to learn more, click the link in the video description. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.